Chapter 1, Lesson 3, Solving Equations with Variables on Both Sides of the Equation. That's what's going to be new today. We've been working on our vocab and our skills for the standard. Again, we've just been wanting to be able to say that you can solve equations in one variable no matter how they look like or what they look like. Now today we're going to introduce this vocab of infinitely many solutions and no solutions. It's been shown over here algebraically, and we've seen it but not referred to it, x equals x gives us this infinitely many solutions, and where a equals b, meaning a and b are different numbers, they're not the same, thus the two different letters, is no solution, and we're going to show that we can solve equations with variables on both sides. To do that, we'll be looking at a couple of terms. Constant. A constant is any number real number or a term with no variable. So like 6 or a negative 9, it could be a fraction, 1 fourth or even a decimal, negative 0 0.3. Anything that doesn't have a variable or a letter is a term with no variable, a constant. And the other one here, this is word coefficient. Just as a reminder, that's the number times the variable. It's the number in front of the variable, the 3 in the 3x, or the negative 9 in the y, whatever number in front of the variable, that's the coefficient. Our goal then is going to be to collect all the variables and put them on one side, and the constants, the plain numbers, on the other side of an equal sign. Now it doesn't matter which side you put the variables on, just get them all to one side, and then put all of the constants on the other side. That's our goal. Then we'll end up having a one-step equation. Let's take a look at it here. Again, notice right away we got variables on both sides. Don't panic. First off, as per usual, anytime we see subtraction, like we do here, we're going to say don't subtract. Add the opposite. The opposite of a positive 2x is a negative 2x. So I'm going to sneak that negative in there. When we're looking at this equation, here's this 15, a constant, and then this other side has no constant. Because of that, I'm going to try to get all of my variables over to this side, the right side, because there are no other constants over there, and it will make fewer steps for us to solve this equation. In order to get rid of adding a negative 2x, we're going to add a positive 2x to both sides. Why did we do that? Again, because when we do that, the positive 2x and the negative 2x cancel, and you're left with 15 on the left side equals, watch your signs, this is a negative 7 plus a positive 2, calculator or mental math approved, gives you a negative 5x. Notice how everything has been staying nice and lined up again, those equal signs staying lined up, up and down. And then from there, you're just going to take this one-step equation, you're going to focus on the side with the variable, get rid of the negative 5, get rid of that coefficient since they are touching and timesing. We will do the opposite and we will divide both sides by a negative 5 because negative 5 divided by negative 5 cancels down to just 1x or just plain x, whichever way you'd like to show that. And then on this side, we get ourselves 15 divided by 5 is 3, but because they do not have the same sign, one is positive and one is negative, that is why we get a negative 3 equals 1x, or you could just say negative 3 equals x. Either will work. It's just a multi-step equation with the first thing to do is to get all of the letters on the same side, all of the variables. Now it doesn't matter where they're at, take a look at both sides. Over here we have an r, oop, let's fix that. Let's make that, how many r is it? What's the coefficient? There is one r, sneak a one there. You don't have to, but it's very helpful, so please do so. Then from there, is there any subtraction? Nope. So looking on that side, it only has a variable. And this side over here on the right has a variable and that constant 18. Thus, I'm going to focus here. I'm going to leave that constant alone. I'm going to leave the 18 alone. I'm going to move the negative 5r. I'm going to get rid of it. In order to get rid of adding a negative 5r, add a positive 5r to both sides of the equal sign. That gives you 6r equals... 18. 
from there again, where our focus, where that variable is. Get rid of that coefficient. Get rid of that 6. Do so by dividing both sides by 6. That leaves you with 1r, or just plain r equals 3. 18 divided by 6 gives you that 3. That's how you're going to see a lot of these work out. That's solving the equation with variables on both sides that have one answer. Now we're going to talk about those new terms, the infinitely many and no solution. First off, any subtraction, we're going to switch that right away. Add the opposite. Now from there, you'll notice it doesn't matter how the equation looks like. Oh no, there's variables on this side and on the right side. There are constants on the left side and the right side. Oh no. Don't panic. Pick one side. It doesn't matter. I'm going to pick this left side over here. And then start with something. I'm going to start with the 3x. I'm going to start with the variables. I usually do that. So I'm going to focus here. I'm going to get rid of adding 3x on the left side. In order to get rid of that 3x, I'm going to add a negative 3x. Again, that was on the left side. So I'm going to do that over here on the right side. Notice how I've lined them up again with their like terms, so I can add that up. Please note that is a negative 3x. We did that because these cancel. And then we're left with a negative 5 equals, and then a 3x plus a negative 3x. So well, that's interesting. Those guys cancel. So hiding right up here, the only thing that remains on this side is the 7. There are no more variables. Don't ever put 0x. Disappear. Make them gone. There is no variables. Then we ask ourselves, right here, is negative 5 equal to negative 7? Is that true? And since we say, uh, no, it is not, that is why our answer is no solution, sometimes abbreviated by that symbol down here. But when you come to this not truth statement, when you get something like negative 5 equals 7 or 10 equals 8, anything that's not true here gives you the final answer, no solution, nothing else to do. That is where we end up. We're doing this because now we can see we've got variables on both sides. We've seen this where there is one solution, and now we've seen down here where there is no solution. So you can put a check mark by that. Oop, no solution down here, as well as one solution, which we've been working on very much so. All so we can say that you can solve equations in one variable. Oh no, this one has fractions. You can change it to a decimal if you'd like, or you can just leave it and distribute. But there's so many steps. Don't panic. First off, any subtraction, switch it to adding the opposite. Now that we have that, you're right. Now there's some distribution. Let's take care of that. One-fourth times 8, or 0.25 if you switched it to a decimal. I'm going to leave it as a fraction so I can just show this to you and remind you that we're going to take and multiply those. So when you do that, I'll do that over here to the side. You're going to take the top times the top and get 8, the bottom times the bottom to get 4. Simplify that. 8 divided by 4 gives me 2x. But now don't forget, you also need to do that with the other term in there. So distribute that 1 fourth to the 12. 1 fourth times 12, which is 12 over 1. Do note that is a 12. It doesn't look like it, but that gives us 12 over 4. Take 12 divided by 4, and that gives us 3. Please note, this is a negative 12 here, so since they don't have the same sign, since the 1 fourth and the negative 12 don't have the same sign, that will be a negative 3. And there is nothing else to distribute. So we're just going to copy everything else down. If you notice something here, that's fine. Otherwise, we're going to keep on going. I'm going to start with the variables. They're on both sides, as are constants. So I'm going to pick a side. doesn't matter which side. I'm going to pick the left. Why? why? That's just the side I feel like picking. I don't know why. So we're going to get rid of adding 2x by adding a negative 2x to both sides of the equal sign. Why? Because that cancels there. We're left with a negative 3 on the left side equals, and then we'll cross 
those off. That's interesting. So if they disappear today, that's fine. 2x plus a negative 2x cancel. Cross it off. The only thing that's still up there is that negative 3. So when we're looking here, there's no letters. Now what, Mr. Walls? Well, now we just ask ourselves, is this true? Does negative 3 equal negative 3? And since we say yes, then our answer is infinitely many solutions. Now you might hear it referred to also as all real numbers, or the sometimes we use this cool little symbol here, it looks like a double R, standing for all real numbers. Infinitely many solutions. It's one of our terms. Whenever you get something that is true, some sort of statement, negative 3 equals negative 3, or 10 equals 10, or 8 equals 8, whatever it is, or 0 equals 0. If it's true, if it's true, then your answer is infinitely many solutions. Another distribution with variables on both sides. Don't panic. Let's distribute. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 6 times half gives us the 3x. Nothing else there to distribute. Over here, take the 2 to the x. Remember that there is 1x there, so that gives you 2x plus. And yes, please draw that line to the, from the 2 to the 1, so you remember to distribute all the way over there. That gives you your 2. Constant and a variable on the left, constant and a variable on the right. Doesn't matter. Pick a side, whichever side you like. For this one, I'll focus here on the right side. Why? Because I chose to. Why? I can see things coming up and I'd like to keep my coefficient positive, but it doesn't matter. You pick a side. You pick a thing. Constant or variable, solve from there. Meaning, I'm going to pick the right side and I'm going to choose to get rid of adding 2x. Because I can. It's the first step that's right. If you wanted to get rid of something else over there, you could. In doing so, how to get rid of adding 2x? Well, I'm going to add a negative 2x on the right side. I'm going to add a negative 2x on the left side of the equal sign. Notice again how I have those like terms already lined up. We did that because these guys cancel here. We're left with 2 on the right side. And bring down that 6 plus 1x. This looks familiar. This is kind of our two-step equation from before. So now we've been working with these. We're going to stay focused here on that 1x. We wanted to isolate it, so I'm going to get rid of adding 6. So that way I have isolated my variable and left it all alone. To get rid of adding 6, I'm going to add a negative 6 to both sides. That leaves me with a lovely x, or just 1x, equal to, watch those signs, a positive 2 plus a negative 6, mental math, or a calculator, both approved, will tell you that that gives you the answer of negative 4. So some equations today will have an answer, x equals negative 4. Some of them you're going to see a truth statement, 0 equals 0, or negative 8 equals negative 8, which tells you your answer then is infinitely many solutions, or all real numbers, depending on what uh, type of work you're doing on the textbook or on IXL, if you're looking somewhere else for examples or notes. If you get some non-true statement, 0 equals 10, that's no solution. We have a triangle here, and it says the legs of this right triangle have the same length. What is the area of the triangle? Well, when it says what's the area of the triangle, first we have to back up, and this is very important where it says these legs are the same length. We really should say it differently. The legs are equivalent. So pick one, 3x, and it's the same length that is equivalent to the other one, 2 and a half. I'm going to switch that to 2 and 5 tenths, 2.5 minus 2x. Now you have yourself an equation. Variables on both sides, okay. So variable on the left, variable and constant on the right. So since there is no constant over here on the left, I'm going to come over on the right, grab that variable, and get rid of it. I'm going to move it to the other side. Before I do that, I'm going to go through and say don't subtract add the opposite. It just helps us keep things in line. So that way, when I look at adding a negative 2x to get rid of that, I'm going to add 2x to both sides. Gives me 5x equals 
two and a half. Thus, we solve that one-step equation. Divide both sides by five. Mental math calculator approved gives you 0 0.5, 5 tenths, or half is what x equals. Great. That's not the end. We're not done there. They said, what's the area of the triangle? Well, in order to do that, we need to know what the lengths of each side are. So what is the side of each? What is the length of each side? Well, they're both the same, it said, but it had this letter in it. So now let's come up here. I'm going to focus in on this guy. It has less work on it. 3x. Awesome. Well, what was x? We just said x was 0 0.5. So what is 3x? What is 3 times half? Or what's 3 times 5 tenths? It gives us 1.5. And you could plug that in down here, too, if you wanted to, and deal with a lot of fractions and decimals. But it told us up here that they are the same length. So both sides are 1.5. That's great, but that still doesn't answer the question, what's the area of the triangle? In order to do that, I'm going to insert a new page so I have room. You can go down below or in between, or maybe you can fit it in there. I need to find the area of a triangle. That formula, BH over 2, is how we're used to seeing it. You might have seen it as BH and 1 half, so half times BH. Either one works, but I'm going to use this first one because where we're at, a lot of people have seen this and are more familiar with that. You're looking at the base and the height of the triangle. They have the same length. So if this side here is one and a half, what's this side down here? You're right. It's also one and a half. Plug that in. One and a half times one and a half, and then don't forget to divide that by two, which gives us the answer of one point. 1, 2, 5. Then you go back and look. It didn't give us any labels for the sides, so I'm going to put the label button up units. And since we're talking about area, it will be square units or units squared, however you'd like to phrase that. When you see something like this, a lot of work in there it looks like, but what all it's saying is, here's that key phrase again, that they're the same length. So you start here, by writing out that equation. That's what we're doing, and then when it says now what's the area of a triangle, that's where it's just taking it one step further and then having us put in that value of x and do one extra step. Last example, our boat travels downstream at three hours at r miles. So it's going down this way, blah, 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 blah. Diagram not needed, but it is fun anyways. Then the boat is gonna go back on a return trip and it takes Five miles per hour slower and goes four hours, so it's going to come back. Blah, 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 blah. But it's going to come back in five hours and, sorry, in four hours and take five miles per hour slower. What is the distance the boat travels each way? That's the important thing to note. Each way is the same distance down here. What is it? Good question. As you may or may not have maybe caught on, we're going to have to write an equation that's probably going to have variables on both sides. So let's take a look at it. We know on the trip downstream, we traveled 3R, rather 3 hours at some miles per hour. R is what it says. So if I told you we were going 20 miles an hour at 3 hours, you'd tell me how far did we go? 60 miles. If you were on the interstate and I said you traveled 70 miles an hour for three hours, how far did you go? You'd take three times the R to give me 210 miles that you've traveled. So right here, we don't know what that R is. We don't know what the speed is, so we're just going to call it 3R. And that's going to be the same distance equivalent to our trip back, which took four hours but did we travel the same speed? No. So what we have to do is we have to adjust our speed. So not just R, but we went faster or slower. Here it tells us we went slower. So we're going to go R minus 5 for that slower at 5 miles an hour slower. Now we've got ourselves a lovely equation. If there's any subtraction, we say don't subtract, add the opposite. And that's where we're going to go through and distribute that four to everything. Careful distribute correctly. I made a mistake on this once. 
and I'll make mistakes again. So if you see one, let me know. Otherwise, we get the 4R. Yes, draw the loop to the other one. So that's going to be a negative 20. Nothing else to distribute. Please keep the 3R on the right side. There you've got it. Once again, it's an equation. We're just going to try to solve it. If there's variables on both sides, then we're going to come over here, and I'm going to focus in on this side because the right side is the only side with a constant which means then I'm going to get rid of this 4R. And that's what I'm going to look at. In order to get rid of the 4R, we're going to add a negative 4R to both sides. Cross those off. I'm left with a negative 1R equals a negative 20. And I don't want that negative 1, so I'm just going to go one step further, and I'm just going to divide by a negative 1, which leaves me with r equals 20. Bingo. r equals 20, but careful. Go back up here and read the question. Solve for r? No. It said, how far did the boat travel each way? So we now know r. Cool. What? What's that, Mr. Walls? So when we scroll back up, we have to remember that r stood for how many miles per hour. It was our speed. So if you know we were traveling at 20 miles an hour, how far did we travel each way? Well, I'm going to come right here to this 3R. Downstream, we went for three hours at some speed R, which we just figured out was 20. So what is 3 times 20? You went 60 miles on the journey downstream and then made the same 60 on the way back. You just went a little slower. Today, I can solve linear equations in one variable. What we're going to be doing is writing out equations. Most of them will probably have variables on both sides, involve multi-step. Again, we'll see many with one solution like our last example, but we've seen often, but we'll see now that we've got these infinitely many solutions where 10 equals 10 or 0 equals 0, something is the same. And then you have that different one where there is no solution because you get 8 equals 0, 0 equals negative 10, 5 equals 4, something that isn't true. Goal, be able to write the equation, and then from there, whatever steps are involved, solve it, as our standard says. Today, I can solve equations with variables on both sides. Big thing we're going to see, we've had one solution before, but now we're going to see if they have no solution or infinitely many solution. And the entire time, this chapter, we're looking to be able to write and solve equations. Now, today, they're going to have variables on both sides.